Hi there, this is Nicole from Spooks Cosplay and in this video I will show you how I made my bodice for my hand-on cosplay. Um, well, I think I'm going to upload this to both my YouTube channels. I had like this small channel where I put on cosplay skits and anything but I never really put effort into that channel and I also have this old cosplay, of oh, cosplay, also this old YouTube channel. Um, I think I haven't posted on there for seven years, a very long time. The um, thing is I used to make uh, AMVs on there, like animated music videos, I think that stands for. Um, I don't have Sony Vegas anymore, so I cannot make content like that anymore. But since cosplay is also a nerdy thing and that is a nerdy thing, I thought by myself, well, why not? Why not post cosplays on this channel? Because it's kind of a waste to let this channel die. And I have fond memories of people that I met through that channel. And I'm not sure if they still use YouTube. But anyway, I met some nice people on there. Um, so yeah, I was like, why not? It's both nerdy stuff. And my first uh, AMV on there was... Uh, from Hanon, from Herman Melody. So I thought that maybe for the comeback it would be nice to uh, let my first video after my comeback also be a Hanon video. So yeah, with that being said, let's go and make the bodice. Before I cut it out my actual fabric, my fashion fabric, my lining and everything, I have made a mock-up to check if everything actually fits. Um, for a mock-up I just made some holes, I didn't insert eyelets because it's just a mock-up. Um, I use zip ties as boning, yeah, cheap materials for fittings. I don't really use them in actual outfits because I think... Uh, I know in America you have like these duck ties, you don't have them in the Netherlands. So we only have regular zip ties and I personally don't find them strong enough. Um, but yeah. Just make a mock-up first if you want to be sure about the fitting. And if the mock-up fits, then you can sew the actual fabrics. So the first thing that you want to do is cut out your pattern pieces. Um, I used a corset pattern by Awena Black. Awena Black. I don't really know the name on the top of my head, but it's the Dolores pattern. And I will put the link in the description below. So cut those pieces out. Um, like I said, it's for a corset, but I'm not making a functional corset. Um, and for the front piece, I adjusted the pattern a little bit. And I cut out uh, a triangle. And then I inserted another triangle piece. Which, um, yeah, which is like a bit wider than the one that I cut out. So I can make a seam in the middle of it. If it makes sense. Um, I forgot to film this, but if you look at these photos, I think you can see what I mean. So I've sewn my lining, which is a canvas fabric, and now I will be ironing the seams. So put this to the button. I didn't realize. So what I basically did, which you didn't see. So what I'm doing now is I'm pressing the seams flat with the iron. Um, they used to stand like this if you're done sewing, like go up and you want to have them open. So now you can just press, but um, if you have one and you prefer, you can also use the tailor hem for the curvy areas, like in the hips and the chest. 
because the pattern is quite curvy, um, it will make it easier to press it down with one of these. They are not necessary, like I've done years without them, but they are nice to have as a little help. So for the next step, I'm going to add the bony channels. I will be using wiggling boning um, because as I mentioned I will not make an actual corset out of it. It's just clothing. It doesn't need to reduce my waist or anything, so wiggling is good enough. Um, if you want to make an actual corset, you can use synthetic wheel bone or steel boning, whatever you prefer. But that stuff is expensive and I'm not really planning on spending that on this. So the first thing I would do is um, I made a 1cm seam allowance. So I would take my ruler and mark at 1cm on the bottom and the, and the top. Centimeter. Cool. So that I know, um, yeah, what's going to be in the seam allowance and what actually can be used. I try to use the remains as much as possible, and when I'm out of remains, then I take the actual fabric. But if I can save, I will save. You can also sew the wichelin directly to the fabric, um, but you know I've, I've got leftovers of the fabric and I've got plenty, so I think using this will give it, uh, the lining at least, a little bit extra strength. Um, if you are making an actual corset with steel boning or wheel bone boning, I strongly suggest it, you cannot it's um, sew that directly to fabric, but with Ritalin you can also just decide to sew this directly to the fabric. It's just not something I'm doing in the seam allowances. I will be doing that in the regular boning placings. So yeah, I'm not gonna finish up these edges because it's the lining, nobody will see it. Um, it will be on the inside. Um, so this will be all hidden by the fashion fabric, so I'm not going to bother finishing them up. If I would make one layer, then I would search them. So yeah, you know, this is fine. Take my pins. And just set them in place. And then you just do this with all the other, um, yeah, all the other seams, and you'll be fine. And then for the other boarding channel marks from the pattern, you you can decide if you want to make like these chases or if you want to directly sew the whistle into them, depending also on what kind of boarding you're using. So yeah, I'm going to do this uh, off camera because you don't need to see this like all the time and then we will be sewing them on. So when you have all the tabs pinned on, we're going to start sewing. Um, I only um, made the channels for the seam allowances, um, or for the seams I mean, so um, I will insert the other boning at the other time. First, I'm going to do this. And then stop the back.
um, don't sew close this one because you need a hole to put your bone into. So just go and stitch back the needle in the highest position. Open. Cut. And cut. And then you've got one boning channel sewn on and then you're going to do the same for the rest of them. I'm going, um, yeah, I'm not going to film that because I've already filmed this one. I don't want a like 10 hour long tutorial. So you know what to do right now and just keep doing this with all the other channels. So I've sewn on all the boning channels on the seams and now I'm going to make a channel for the back lacing and um, when cutting out the pattern I just added one centimeter extra. This is a ruler especially designed for ironing so it's heat resistant. Um, yeah and I can just fold it over to one centimeter. It has centimeters written down there so I'm going to do that. Maybe a little bit extra, just in case. Just to be sure, I'm also clipping them in place. You can also use pins. Um, you can also just don't do this because it's all I went. But I'm doing it just to be safe. You never know. And I'm going to do that on the other back side as well. And then I will sew this close with my sewing machine. Just like I did for the others. So I have marked here where boning should be and also here and um, there will be also a row of boning right here and I want to uh, sew those directly to the fabric so I'm going to do that one first those four pieces of boning and then I will start working on the boning that goes into the boning channel. This is because um, this way the it's all still fairly flexible so it's easier to put underneath the machine and and that's why i'm starting this way so what i'm going to do get my wig in also grab a pair of scissors and just go like this this is the one i'm starting on Check how long it should be. I've marked my one centimeter here. So, right there. Cut it. Round up the edges so it doesn't uh, poke through the fabric. this out of the way and this one too as you can see it's round like this is what which then does it has been on a wall so what you can do is set your machine to a light yeah a low or a medium setting and just start ironing it flat If you iron too hard, um, it will go curling the other way. So when that happens, you can just... Whoa! <laughs> well, 
saved it, uh, then you know that you should use a lower setting. So you can just try it out. Um, yeah. So now it's straight. Turn off the machine. And you have a straight piece of boning. Like I said, it's vitiline is um, very flexible. It's not for reducing waste. It's just for keeping everything up. Like that, you. Uh, it's a it's a costume without shoulder shoulder straps. Whoa! I really need to learn to pronounce those things. It's with shoulder straps, so um, if you don't use them, in my case, they mostly just slide down, and you don't want it. So it's just for the shape. It's not for body alterations. So yeah. So then we take a lining like that. We take our boning. Check if it's, yeah, it's nice. Okay. Place it on the markings, and then. Like I said, you can just sew this directly. Maybe I should just a little bit. Yeah, that's better, I think. And stitch back. That sound is not good. But um, yeah, just sew it on like this. I'm going to check what the sound is from, but I'm not going to film that anymore. So just continue sewing it on. So I've sewn on the Wichelin on the side. And now I'm going to do for the, the backs. Um, the back side, it will be on both sides, but I'm only going to show one side because you do the exact same thing for the other one. Get the Wichelin. Take a piece of boning, place it roughly, I'm just eyeballing the one centimeter here. I think it's right here. So, cut it off again. Make sure you round up the edges. And then you will iron this thingy again. And then we're going to sew it on. So um, I want the Wichelin to be sewn about one and a half centimeter from this stitch. I'm just going to fold it a little bit to get a clearer view of where that is. So that means I need to place it a little bit to the left. Right there. Then start sewing. By the way, check your needle because I knew where my sound was coming from. It was um, I was convinced I had jeans needles in there, but it turned out that I had micro text needles in there. So mm, had to change my needles. Um, check them. Don't be like me. Wait, did I stitch back just in case? So, now these are sewn in. So we're going to move on to the channels we've created. And for that you just, uh, once again, just measure it like this, cut it off. Um, I want it flat. That's the first steps. So let's do that. So when you've got that which link cut out, just simply grab the lining. Be sure you have um, sewn in the top, but you've left the bottom open or the other way around, it doesn't really matter. And just slide it in. So it doesn't go any further. Yep. 
bits in and then get the one centimeter spot just so close And now the boning is secured inside the lining. So you're going to do that with all the channels and yeah, then it's mostly done. So I have now inserted all the bonings or soon on the bonings. And with that the lining is actually pretty much finished. And we will continue on to the fashion layer. So because, um, yeah, this video is going to be way longer than I thought it would be. Um, so while editing, I have decided that instead of one video for the bodice, I will split it up in two. So this is the end of part one. I'm finished with my lining. And in part two, I will go on about the fashion fabric. So stay around, watch part two. And yeah, I hope you enjoy these videos. I'm fairly new to making video tutorials. Um, this is not something I've done before, or at least not many times before. So I hope it's all clear. Um, if you like it, give a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.